Well, let me tell you something, brother. It's the holiday season, and for this special, we watch Santa with Muscles starring Hulk Hogan. So what you gonna do when Hulkamania, the B-Movie Maniacs, and Christmas run wild on you? Tonight on B-Movie Mania! Welcome to the crossroads of camp, the bastion of the bazaar, the place where low budgets meet high praise. Yes, it's B-Movie Mania. And now, B-Movie Maniacs, here are your hosts, the cream of the crap, the connoisseurs of cult, your cinematic creepy uncles, Paul Brooks, Mike Hayes, Jason Hulls, and Crazy Chris Hudson. Welcome, welcome. It's the holiday season. I'm Jason Hulls. On behalf of B-Movie Mania, we're all here. We're all around the fire. This is great. I'm glad we could all be here together. Uh, with me, as uh -huh. always, I have Paul Brooks. Ho, ho, holy shit. <laughs> Crazy Chris Hudson. Ho, 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 no. And at least four people's favorite B-movie maniac, Mike Hayes. Hey, guys, I bet you there's going to be three more favorites because Uncle Mikey made some eggnog. Ooh. Ooh. Here, you, here you go, Chris. That's for you. Oh, no. Jay, there you go. Oh, and nice. Paul, Thank this you. one's extra special. This one's extra Mike, special for you, Paul. Mike, the last time you, you did you this, much. I woke up really sore with no memory of my night. Yeah, well, we had a lot of fun that night. So I, I mean, heard. Chris, to be honest, to, to be fair, that's most nights, is yeah. it not? Well, you know, I just, I, I'm trying to come up with some excuse. <laughs> it's not working. Was a different part of you than normal, sore, or? <laughs> it was just everywhere. All of okay, me. Okay, all right. As so, almost as sore as this movie made me. Let's, uh, let's take a drink here, guys. Can we, can we enjoy a drink here? Or yeah, the let's do it. Let's try this. Mm, yes, please. Cheers. Mm. 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 Very mm. good. That's tasty. Oh, hey, yeah. hey, Paul. Yes. I'm drunk. <laughs> I don't know what I'll do. <laughs> you you do not have my tolerance, okay? <laughs> so, Fair enough. guys, I I'm I'm happy that my pick won. Yes. Our uh our little poll among our significant others. I'm happy as well. Yeah, can we talk about that for a second? Yeah, sure. Go ahead. Me and Mike can just not get anything going. I thought we had two pretty good picks, and the Ugh. ladies did not give a shit Betrayal. at all. Betrayal. Betrayal. Oh, they were all good. I mean, really, yeah, they were all good true. picks. Even my kids picked my pick. Yeah. I don't know why I lost. You told them, right? Yeah, you... you no, <laughs> no. I, I did not tell anyone ahead of time which pick was mine. Are you telling me your kids, your... I think... At least one's a teenager now, right? Is that how old you are? Almost, yeah. Tween, Almost. A tween? Uh, they, you're telling me they didn't want the shittily animated film starring SpongeBob SquarePants? No, no. my oh. kids my kids can <laughs> uh, th they can tell quality when they see it. Uh, they, uh, they just knew. All right, wait, wait, wait. Are you trying to say that Santa with muscles isn't quality? <laughs> well, I mean, I'd never seen it before, so. No one has. <laughs> Yeah. I don't think I had either. <laughs> no, it's, uh, it's I had not. was released in uh, on 98 screens uh, on November 10th, 1996. So my senior year of oh. high school. That was my senior year in Army. <laughs> you know what? <laughs> yeah, that, what happened with that is it came out with those, in, what you said, November 10th, right? Yeah. Because just a week or two later... Jingle All the Way came out, and then everyone went. Everyone just thought, "Oh fuck! Well, why? Why waste money on Santa with muscles? We got Jingle All the Way. We got Sinbad." Was that really the same year? Yeah, yeah. And I same think year. there was actually huh. some like, you know, this movie was pretty panned, you know. But they said something to the effect of like, "It makes Jingle All the Way look good." <laughs> to be fair, I think there <laughs> an argument could be made that Santa with muscles is actually the better of the two holiday classics. Agreed. Hmm. Although there's no there's no Jake Lloyd in, in Santa with muscles, so unfortunately. <laughs> um, okay, so Mike, I hear that you have something special prepared for us at the end of the show. You want to talk about it? Absolutely. Well, I don't know if I want to talk about it. I think it might be a nice little surprise, though. Uh, I think it's it's a nice let's call it my Christmas gift to to you, my fellow maniacs, but also the rest of the maniacs out there in the world. Hmm. I just want to spread a little holiday cheer. I really hope it's what I think it is. Is it safe to say it's going to get us in a festive mood? 
It's very festive and no Hudson. It is not any pink slime. <laughs> Well, that was that was actually Good. my second thought. Uh, yeah, but no, we'll do. Yeah, we'll pop it off at the end of the episode. And I'll, I'll give you guys a little Christmas gift. Awesome. Well, I'm looking forward yeah. to it. Well, I want to get to that. So why don't we uh, unwrap a little present early now and get into some quick takes? Quick takes. I thought we were going to do the surprise now. Show's over. We'll end it you, early. You got to have dinner before you get your dessert, Chris. Fine. But quick takes. Chris, If just to make things go as quickly as possible, I'll let you do the first quick take. First quick take? Uh, great cast. <laughs> <laughs> I don't disagree. Mike. <laughs> when I finished watching this movie, and let me tell you, I finished watching the movie. I I had to then queue up Ernest Saves Christmas to make sure my favorite Christmas movie hadn't been overthrown. Whoa. Oh my God. Whoa. Wow. Wow. High praise. Paul. Uh, you know, I live in Los Angeles and there's a lot of car chases out here. So I'm glad that I learned that if I ever get myself into a car chase, all I got to do is just dump some salad dressing on the road and I'm good to go. That's it. That's all you got to do. Works every time. <laughs> uh, my my quick take is um, nearly a perfect Christmas movie. Yeah. Huh, okay. Wow, wow. All right. We'll we'll see about hey, that. Hey, Paul. I just also want to add another tip for you out in LA is that it, uh, you can also easily get away from the cops if you try to murder them while they chase you. <laughs> oh, okay. I'll give that a shot. <laughs> that that seems to work pretty well too. Some of that takes place very early in the movie, but let's rewind just a little bit, Chris. Do you want to? Do you remember how the movie kicks off? The very first thing? Uh, yeah, I think uh, the little girl says a little prayer to Santa Claus about... It's not a prayer. She's writing a letter. Oh, that's right. I forgot. Oh, yeah. You know, I even have a note here that says this little girl is very literate. <laughs> She's using... <laughs> she is very literate. She's writing a letter to Santa. Dear Santa, how are you? I'm not doing so well. There is this really, really bad man named Ebner Frost who lives up on the hill. He's got these weird people working for him, and I think they're going to do something really bad this Christmas. She's an orphan, and, you know, they have a lot of... Orphanages, especially in California, are known for their literacy programs. I think we all know oh, that. Oh, yeah, definitely. Is that so? Um, and this one's going to shut down. She's writing a letter. She wants Santa to save them. The basis of the movie. They spell it out for you right there. They tell you everything you need to know in that first bit right after they cue the horrifying Christmas music at the beginning. <laughs> <laughs> okay, one thing about the music I really liked, every time Hogan is just kicking ass, it's playing, like, Deck the Halls. <laughs> like, oh, yeah. <laughs> it's, what I, it's what I wanted to say. I've never heard Deck the Halls used as a fight theme before, <laughs> yeah, but it's awesome. it, it worked pretty well. A lot of it is a lot of it is sort of that generic though sort of hallmark sounding Christmas music. There's there's not much to no, it. All of it is, Paul. All of it is that because if you watch yeah. the credits, not a single fucking song is credited. It's all royalty free. Oh, it's so great. Every single song. Which is strange too because Jordan Belford was one of the executive producers, the Wolf of Wall Street guy. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, you'd think he could spring for some like actual music. Well, he can now. <laughs> Not now, but in 1996. Hey guys, uh, this eggnog, uh, I thought maybe it might uh, pair nicely with some uh, North Pole Nutty Bars. I got some here if anyone Ooh. would uh, would oh, like yeah. one. Oh yeah, toss me yeah, a I'll pack. take one, buddy. A little sure. Debbie. Okay, yeah. we'll, we'll bust them out here. I like to roast mine over uh, that open flame mm. we've got in the fire. Hell yeah, here you go, mm. here you go. Nice. Mike. Oh, thank you. Now, these are not vegan. I apologize in advance. Ah, jeez. Sorry. So, Mike, why don't you uh, walk us through the first time we see um, Hogan Claus or Santa Hulk or whatever. Uh, Blake Thorne? Blake Thorne. <laughs> yeah, Blake Thorne is his, his character name, though I we are going to be calling him, you know, uh, whatever you just said. But no, we come in and he is decked out in commando clothing, camouflage, hiding behind some bushes. Uh, Mike, Mike, I know we're going to get into this a little bit later with the bazooka thing, but uh, we're talking desert BDUs. Oh, please don't yeah. tell me we're doing another bazooka thing. <laughs> Thank you for, for talking about that, because I actually have it in my notes here. I wanted to know what you thought of Santa Hulk's 
military uniform. Was that in, was that regulation hanging open with the black tank top? Was that no? In fact, I, I have a, another note here in, in all my notes. Uh, his uniform is not in regulation. Okay, but so, it doesn't really well, guess, matter, right? Guess what, well, guys? <laughs> if I could finish my fucking yeah, sentence, Mike's supposed sorry, to be talking. Sorry, Mike. Sorry. Yeah, go ahead. Are we still in your quick take? <laughs> yeah, we're still doing that. Um, no, he's he's hiding in these bushes. He's in camouflage, and uh, he comes out and he gets attacked by a guy and another guy. And he beats not, not, both not just up. a guy, a chef. It's true. He was a chef, um, <laughs> and then a chauffeur. And, then, and it was just a real intense fight scene. And then you find out that they're just his his living servants that he makes attack him, a la Pink Panther style. How'd I do? Oh, really? you're what the tremendous. Fuck? You're the best. You never I could Weasels. If you guys are bucking for a Christmas bonus, forget it. Right. I've got to say, though, that that weed eater the gardener attacks him with is the most realistic weapon we see in the, in the entire movie. <laughs> that was pretty slick. Was that a military-grade weed whacker? That, that was. Nice. Yeah. Something uh, that I would like to mention real quick about this uh, first scene that we see Hulk Hogan in. You may have noticed that he has hair. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Full head. This is 97. And there's a lot of Hulk Hogan, sort of like mid-90s straight-to-video Hulk Hogan movies on Amazon Prime right now, and I've been watching a lot of them, and for whatever reason, in a lot of these movies, he has the fake hair, and, and I'm. it makes me wonder whether or not that, that's something that he asked for. Hey, I can have you know hair in my movies, or if that was like the studio trying to make him look more... Appetizing? I don't know. I don't know because uh, appetizing, Paul. <laughs> his well, you know, his two big hits, the two big movies he was in, is Mister Nanny and Suburban Commando, which both came out before this, wait. and he is bald as shit in those. Uh, what about the sex tape? <laughs> yeah, that we, came out afterwards. Well, let me tell you, his his ass had a lot of hair on it. <laughs> yeah, hairy ass, bald head. I think he's got a hat or something. You can't he's really probably wearing a, his do like the bandana. He's got the bandana. Yeah. So you've seen it, Chris? The Hulkamania bandana. Is this just this should have been part of your quick take? But is Chris is this movie better than the sex tape? And why did you watch both of them in the same night back to back? <laughs> well, it's important to have perspective when you go into these episodes. Mm -hmm, so I just wanted mm -hmm. to see the evolution of uh, Hulk Hogan's acting ability. <laughs> sure. Let me tell you, he. You can tell he's taken some lessons since 1996. Cool. Does okay. the sex tape follow canon correctly? Do you feel it's true to the canon of... Does it, I, does it follow I do, bazooka I do, <laughs> I do feel like he kept continuity with established mythology. Uh, good, 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 good. Hey, Chris, does, ha does Hulk have a bazooka or an RPG? How would you, how would you describe it? <laughs> well, you're going to you're gonna have to wait for season two of B-Movie Mania when, I, when it's my first oh, pick. Uh, so we'll talk about okay, it Okay, so Fine. after uh, the, the uh, servants attack him... He turns down, I believe, a request for a nonprofit. He's just a real scummy guy. He just, he really sucks. And instead, he wants to go play paintball with his friends. Paul, you were, I think you alluded to this a little bit ago. Like, what, what goes on there with the uh, Hulk, with his buddies in the car? They're driving around, going to go play paintball. What happens? Well, they're going to go play paintball, and they are traveling through what looks to be back roads at high velocities. They accidentally run into someone. I don't want to say it. I know Chris wants to say it, so I'm going to let him have it. Clint Howard? <laughs> oh, yeah. Come on, come on. Get a little more excited about it. Clint Howard? <laughs> there you go. That was a little too hot. Can we do it one more time? Clint Howard? Yeah, perfect. Yeah, I mean, it's bad. We got men with guns out here on 43. It must be militia terrorists. Send everything you got. I'm rolling. I also want to say at this point of the movie that I thought uh, Hulk Hogan would be the one to try to shut down the orphanage. You know, I did too at first. I thought he was going to be there. There'd be something there. I thought yeah. he was going to shut it down, yeah. get amnesia, and then change his mind. Something like that. But we'll get there. We'll yeah, get like there. be against himself. Or, yeah, whatever. Yeah, we'll get there. So they run across Clint Howard and... Um, as himself. As a police officer? <laughs> uh, yeah, just as himself. He's just chilling in a cop car. And uh, a chase, a high-speed chase ensues. Like, during this high-speed chase, Hulk shoots at cop cars with paintballs. Yeah. And Felony. just thinks it's hilarious. Felony right yeah. there. 
Oh, yeah. Which, I guess it, ju- it justifies another cop to shoot back at them with a shotgun. <laughs> and, you know, Hulk has a lot of rules through this whole movie. Yeah, that's Hulk important. Hulk has <laughs> rules. Santa Claus has rules. And this is where we learn of one of the rules. Rule 21. Rule number 21. When in doubt, get out. Later. And he jumps out of the moving <laughs> car, or Humvee, leaving his friend in the, in the passenger seat. And it just takes off. Yeah, his friend's fine with it. I also want to say I believe that is the 13th Code of Kang. <laughs> yeah, that, that is the 13th Code of Kang. I think, okay, it's really important to talk about these rules, actually, because, Hogan, you know, Santa Hogan has this set of rules, like hundred, over 100 of mm-hmm. them, God. that we learn in the very beginning of this movie. And then uh, Santa has the Santa rules. And that there, there's a parallel between these two, his story arc, that his original self and his new self they they parallel each other and they, that's the, that's the literal only bit of story structure in this entire fucking movie. Everything else is bonkers. Also, Star Trek fans might note that uh, his rules also resemble the Ferengi rules of acquisition quite a bit. <laughs> well, re- the first rule of uh, the Ferengi rules of acquisition is say your prayers. <laughs> Eat your vitamins. vitamins. Yeah, all that. <laughs> All that good stuff. It's it's crazy. The levels. I, Quirk says it all the, the time. The levels that, that are going on here. Um, so, okay, Hulk runs into the mall, and meanwhile, we switch over, God. and there's, like, elves, and Santa hasn't shown up, right? The manager of the mall offers the elves 50 bucks to find Santa. And then, Okay, so I'm going to sort of breeze through these next couple, couple points here. Then we cut to some, uh, like, a mad scientist played by Ed Bagley. I think his name was Edmund Frost. Was that it? Ebner. Ebner. Ebner, that's right. Yeah. Um, and he's on a TV... A little TV, and he wants to buy some guy's <laughs> shoe store, and he's talking to him through the TV. And Frost's lackeys have this guy hung upside down, and they're like all the lackeys are these weird caricatures that are really <laughs> great. There's, I think, an archaeologist, right, who's all in like khaki and can, stuff. Can, can, can I jump in real yeah, quick? Yeah, Jack? yeah, sure. Because Mr. Frost is the main bad guy. He's like the rich guy who wants to buy up land. For, we have no idea. In, in downtown Orlando, he's buying. No, it's not downtown Orlando. It's uh, that small, whatever small town. But it's this like a, is definitely in Calabasas. Let me just say. Yeah, I thought this was in California. It takes place in Orlando, though, or or what? outside of Orlando. How did you get that? It's a wrestling movie. Oh. It's, it always takes place in Florida. <laughs> It was def- definitely in Calabasas, where they also shot uh, Big Money Wrestlers, by the way. Oh, really? And Gone with the Wind. Oh. Three classics. Three classics. Um, okay, anyway, so so the the main bad guy is this rich guy who wants to buy the land. He has a right-hand man named Dr. Blight, who is his personal physician, uh, who's just a weird, weird, creepy guy. But then Blight has, like, henchmen under him, and it's Mr. Flint, a world-renowned geologist, Mr. Vile, a Canadian chemist, and then Miss Watt, who he just refers to as electrifyingly beautiful. <laughs> so it just it just goes down. World-renowned geologist, and then a Canadian chemist, and then electrifyingly beautiful. Who gives it? It's a woman. Who cares? I, I, just, I just have to say here that uh, that I have ties to the scientific community, and uh, I'm not surprised that these guys would these scientists would moonlight as thugs. Why you say that? Because science doesn't pay. <laughs> yeah. Well, they're one step ahead of uh, science, and they're also one step ahead of the law. <laughs> Can someone explain th- these these lackeys to me, though? Because, I, like, Miss Watt or whatever has, like, superpowers. <laughs> she has, like, electricity shooting out of her hands. And it's never explained. Yeah, she had, she had the coolest thing going on there. But they're all, like, yeah. vi- they're all, like video game bad guys or something. Like, they're different boss levels or something is the feeling I got. And I really like that. <laughs> find the scent of methane gas offensive. <laughs> I like to think of it as nature's perfume. <laughs> How do you sit down and write this and go, we'll have la- lackeys, one will be an archaeologist, one will be really into farts, one will, like, <laughs> shoot electricity, well, like, who wrote well, this well, shit? Paul, Paul, let me tell you something, that the writers for this movie, this is the only thing they have ever written. Well, and, you know, actually, another thing about the, the original writer, the script ended up so different, the original writer sued to have his name removed <laughs> from the film. So somewhere out there, there's a very different version of this script. I... I am starting a Kickstarter to find out what the yeah. fuck that script there was. Were, there were three. <laughs> Mike, I bet there were three electric women. 
I bet you there were no fart people in it originally. <laughs> this movie gets insane, but we'll, we'll get there. So Hulk creeps through the mall, right? He's he's running from the police, and he decides that he's going to evade the police by hanging on a trash chute. And Clint Howard is, is following God. him with his partner and has such a great line here. He says, they're looking around and they don't find him, even though they can see his, they could see his fingers hanging in the trash chute, like literally like three feet behind them. It's, it's pretty obvious. It's pretty obvious, but it, who cares? And Clint Howard says, I'm not going to let this get, guy get away with Santa fraud. <laughs> like, it's really good. It's such a good line. Like, I didn't catch yeah. that. One yeah. of many home run jokes in this movie. Oh, home run. Yeah. And, and never mind all that attempted murder that just happened. Santa fraud. Santa fraud. That's what we're after now. And about this time, the cops take off, and a janitor several floors up throws a like a big God. Santa lawn ornament down the chute, and it hits Hulk, and he falls down the chute and gets amnesia. He he doesn't know who. I've got he a bit up. of a problem with this because the last time I was hanging down a multi-level mall garbage chute, and I was hit by a, by a lawn ornament, I did not get amnesia. Are you sure about no. that? <laughs> But it has yeah. happened. Yeah, I mean, no, I'm saying it doesn't happen, Paul. You don't get amnesia. Chris, are from you falling sure? Down or like do, you, are, do you only know yourself as Chris because of the mirror that we hold up to you and what we tell you? You don't know. No, no, I, I, yeah, no, I. Well, yeah, you could maybe you could be an evil millionaire. You you bring you bring up a valid argument. Okay, that's all I that's all <laughs> I was going for. So, um, who wants to talk about the lead elf who ends up being Santa Hulk's sidekick? Mike? I'll, I will go for it. Paul, go. His name is Lemmy. Wait, Lemmy or Lenny? Lenny? Uh, that was N, Len, Lenny. With an N. Lenny, okay. Yeah. And he is portrayed by, ah, uh, what's his name? Is it Don Stark? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Who some of you may recognize. It took me a sec. I was like watching the movie. I'm like, I know this guy from something. But he was one of the main characters on that 70s show. Yes. Interesting. And is the first main character from that 70s <laughs> show introduced in this movie. Yes, and he's, he sort of plays like this sleazy, sort of how-you-doing, New Jersey scumbag criminal uh, who is, f for whatever reason, working part-time as an elf. Uh, <laughs> I guess, you know, you got to get by. And I, I wasn't clear on this. He's sitting down at the end of the garbage chute, I guess just sort of <laughs> randomly. Well, yeah. the, the, all the elves were supposed to be looking for Santa. So Why is he looking for Santa in a garbage chute? Well, where else know. do you find Santa? Come on, Paul. I guess the, in a garbage the, chute. The, <laughs> I mean, it worked we, out We for also him. learn very early on that he has a debt to someone. I, I didn't even catch it through. I, this is the first I'm hearing about this debt. No, but he's on the phone with one of the lackey guys. You, you see yeah, him I mean, on the phone it, with, uh, what's his name, Mike? Blight, Dr. Blight. Yeah. No, no problem. It's no problem. I just ran okay. into a streak of bad luck, that's all. Honey, I'll have the money for you today, I promise. Uh, while while uh, Blake is passed out, uh, Blake, uh, Santa, <laughs> what, what are you calling him? Santa Hulk. Santa Hulk, <laughs> sorry, <Claws> mania <laughs> Yeah. While he's passed out, uh, Lenny kind of goes up to him and and steals his wallet, essentially, and starts flipping through it. Uh, I have in my notes that he finds a Blockbuster video card in his wallet. <laughs> awesome. I didn't yeah. notice that. Uh, but also finds several credit cards, which uh, makes him just giddy with, uh, with delight. <laughs> Merry Christmas. Merry, Merry Christmas, I'm rich. <laughs> And Mr. Frost will pulverize me. Cause, yeah, because he knows, he recognizes who Blake is, right? Like, he recognizes right, who... Right, right. He's sort of like a recognizable figure. I guess the real-world comparison would be like... Uh, Hulk Hogan? Hulk Hogan, yeah. <laughs> 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 so, yeah, um, then... He pretty much just tries to convince him he's Santa, right? Like, he tells him... He tells him twice that he's Santa Claus and Hulk yeah. believes him. <laughs> and so he leads him to talk to all the kids. Did, did we mention, Jay, I don't, I don't want to cut you off here, but did we mention that while Santa Hulk was running through the mall, he puts on this Santa costume in order to, you know, go into disguise mode, Oh, yeah, we forgot that, yeah. Right, 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 right. He right. disguised himself. Correct. Because that's pretty important um, to uh, Lenny eventually being able to convince him that he is Santa because he's already wearing the Santa when, costume. When he gets hit and has amnesia. Also, that right. Santa fraud comment doesn't make any sense if Hogan's not already dressed as Santa. Correct. Yes, so he is already dressed as Hulk at that point. Yeah, put it or together, audience. Don't be a bunch of idiots. <laughs> and can I just say, he looks like shit. <laughs> 
<laughs> it's such a shitty well, looking Santa. Well, yeah, because he hasn't had Mila Kunis fix right. his costume He looks yet. a little rough, but Mila fixes it up later. Who? Yeah, uh, you'll see. Uh, um, that, so yeah, yeah. Kunis. He, Me- he's <laughs> led out to talk to all the kids. He's very out of sorts. And about that time, some punks tried to steal a giant globe of money from an <laughs> orphanage. <laughs> But it's only, it's only filled with like 50 bucks, though. Yeah, it's not very much, but it's filled with money. And this little girl sees these guys stealing it because the woman <laughs> behind the stand is asleep and they just walk off with all this money. And she screams. You'll be good. Santa will be right back. Okay. Someone's been very naughty. The rich asshole who who got amnesia and put on a Santa Claus outfit suddenly has this like moral compass that he has to follow. He's become a <laughs> Superman of sorts. It's out of nowhere. <clears throat> well, well, no, I mean not from out of nowhere. I mean concussions are well known to make people want to help others. Oh yeah. Well, I'm not gonna bring up. Let's not get dark. Anyway, um, <laughs> just look up the history of wrestling. Okay, move on. <laughs> so the crowd cheers when he just beats the crap out of them. Two. Deck the halls. <laughs> so good. It's great so music. Here. Hulk, yeah. Hulk decides he wants to go to the mission, which or whatever the orphanage's name is. Like he wants to go there to see the place, and he doesn't know where his sleigh is. So <laughs> <laughs> he has to ride Lenny's scooter. <laughs> pretty good visual. Yeah. It's so it's good. Pretty great. And and so far up to this point, the movie has kind of made sense. I just want to bring that up right now. Has it? Yes, yes. No, thanks. Now, granted, it's been a little loose with why the writing and why certain things happen, but it's all been the the punks were stealing the orphanage's money, so Santa thinks about the orphanage. He wants to go help that. Blah, blah, blah. A is connected to B is connected to C. Mike, I'll agree with you only because at this point of the movie, I thought that Ed Bigley Jr. just wanted the orphanage to build a parking lot. Over it, ah, or under it. No, see, that's the great, so, one of the great yeah. things about Santa with muscles is it gets progressively crazier. Yeah, I just wanted to bring that goes. up because we're eventually going to start talking. Things are about to get bonkers, right? And so he does get the shoe store. So he does. He points out in the yeah, next under scene that the last thing under duress that he points <laughs> out the last thing he needs is the orphanage. Now our plans are almost complete. I still have one last headache: the orphanage. Round up the troops and see if we can convince our little friends to adopt a new attitude. <laughs> adopt. That's a good one, sir. And then we have the lackeys in the ice cream truck. God damn it. I wanted oh, to yeah. say that. Fucking. Okay, that's Mike, what go I'll... ahead and say Mike, it. Mike, let's no. rewind. Mike, say it. Mike, go ahead. Guys, you know what else we don't know? What? Why the lackeys are driving in an ice cream truck. <laughs> 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 and... And the best thing about it, we will never know. Nope, that's never explained. No spoily that, that you don't know. And I don't care. <laughs> Do you think any of them? Do you think it's because it's the Canadian chemist? Because it's cold? I don't know. Like none of it I makes sense. Know. None of the lackeys have any sort of themed ice cream. Okay, so th- this is where the lackeys show up at the orphanage to threaten the people there. And uh, who wants it? Who wants this scene? It's where Hulk pulls up for the first time, and what happens? Garrett Morris. I knew you wanted to say it. I did. I did want to say <laughs> it. Be a little more excited about it, though. Garrett Morris! There we go. That nice. was a little hot. Can we get one more? Garrett Morris! Of Saturday Night Live fame. Oh, and the stuff. Or two broke girls later on. Oh, yeah, that too. I know him from the stuff. Walk us through this whole thing here. Uh, yeah, so they, uh, the, you know, the scientists come up and say they need the orphanage for a parking lot or whatever. We don't know at this point. And uh, they pull the statue down, and Garrett Morse is angry, and he runs in front of the ice cream truck, and they're, like, speeding along, and they're going to slam into the former Saturday Night Live star. <laughs> but Santa with muscles saves the day. How does he do that? Uh, but, oh, yeah, he grabs onto the, uh, the tow line. He grabs onto the rope. <laughs> The rope that they pulled the statue down with. Yes, he grabs the chain and just stops the truck. <laughs> dead. Stops it dead. Inches from, from the guy. So so becoming Santa, or, or fake becoming Santa, has given him a moral compass and super fucking strength. 
Mm-hmm. Well, he's Santa with muscles. Come on. <laughs> he may have had the strength beforehand, and we, and we just didn't see it on full display yet. That's a good point. That is a good point. He, he was just too rich to display it. He could have just been dick with muscles before. <laughs> <laughs> that was the working title. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm looking forward to that prequel. <laughs> Merry Christmas, Santa! <laughs> You know, I'm just going to open this other beer now. Thanks, Mike. That's probably good. Like. Yeah. Yo, this eggnog is awesome. Hell yeah. What is? What did you put in this? Oh, 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 oh. Oh, 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 well, look what we have here. It's the B-Movie Maniacs. Santa? Is that really you, Santa? <laughs> yes, children. It's me, Santa Claus. And guess what I have for all of you today? Oh, boy. Presents? <laughs> That's right, little Paul. I have one present for each of you, and inside these boxes is something very special. Is it a fire truck? No? Ha! How would I fit a fire truck in this? It's the, like the size of a box of Pop Tarts. I think he means a toy fire truck. <laughs> yes, yes. I know, still way too small. Anyway, inside these boxes are numbers. Very special numbers, children. Wait, are, are they the numbers that will determine who goes in which order for season two of B-Movie Mania? <laughs> That's right, little Chris. Wow, I've been waiting to find out about this for a long time. <laughs> well then, little Paul, why don't you open the first box? Okay, I will! <laughs> <laughs> I'm going last again? <laughs> Ooh. This sucks. Ouch. <laughs> I did not see that coming. No, hold Here on, you... wrong, oh, wrong oh, spot. Wrong place. Oops, wrong spot. Oh. <laughs> Santa's is reacting awesomely to you going oh, last. Oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> ho, 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 ho. Very nice. Okay, Michael, your box is next. Ooh, goody. <laughs> Ooh, you're first. Oh. <laughs> oh. Wow. I did not see that coming. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> All right, Michael. That's enough out of you or you're going on my naughty list next year. <laughs> Sorry, Santa. <laughs> Here you go, Crazy Chris. <laughs> Wait, with a name like that, are you on my naughty list? <laughs> no, no, Santa. I promise. I've been real good. <clears throat> <clears throat> Oh, no, <laughs> real good. <clears throat> okay, then. Open it up. Oh, you're third again. What the fuck? <laughs> fuck. Third again? <laughs> oh, my. <laughs> Merry Christmas, boys. <laughs> Wait, Santa, don't I... Don't I get a present? I mean, everyone else has their number, so... It... It's pretty obvious what your number is. Uh, yeah, I know, but I'd still like to open mine. Oh, fine. Here you go. Oh, yay! I'm second. Wow. Big surprise. Okay, boys, back to the North Pole for Santa. Christmas is almost here. Thank you, Santa. Thank you, Santa. Thank you. Thank you, Santa. Ho, 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 ho. Have a merry Christmas and a great season, too. Ho, 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 ho. Yay! Yay! Here. I bet you had a long trip. Thank you, uh... Elizabeth, I wrote you the letter. 
<laughs> you have to cut Elizabeth some slack. She still believes in that stuff. She also believes in the Tooth Fairy and the Easter Bunny. So, okay, af- we do meet the, quote, the leftover orphans. There are yeah. three of them. <laughs> there are three left. And uh, one of them would go on to star in uh, that 70s show, which we've already said her name. Her, so, her uh, name is also Lenny. It, it's not, but... Um, <laughs> Mila Kunis. <laughs> Mila Kunis, thank you. And she's she was there. fugly as a child. Holy it's her shit, first Paul. movie. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Paul, she's like 13. <laughs> Holy shit. I know, but I'm looking at her, I'm like, this fugly girl looks like Mila Kunis. Like a fugly Mila Kunis. Oh, do we wow. have to keep saying wow. it? I'm sorry. Paul, cut that part out. And that's a guarantee that he won't. At Cup Cup Drinks on Twitter. Just at Cup I mean, Cup Drinks. I mean, it's fine because she's obviously doing totally good now. What do you mean? I'm just saying she had to grow into her eyes a little bit. They're like bugging out of her skull. <laughs> and it's weird, too, because this came out in 96. And when did uh, that 70s show... She was like 16 when she started that, so this is only a couple years before. Dude, Mila Kunis is not going to... She's going to cancel her subscription to the show now. Hey, guys. <laughs> jerk chicken night. Okay, everybody. Let's set the table and watch. It's jerk chicken night. Yeah. 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 <laughs> it's oh. what Garrett Morris is serving for dinner. And they invite uh, Santa Hulk and Lenny to have dinner and stay the night. Because is, why yes. would you not invite complete strangers into your home? Yeah, it's, it was to baffling to me and everyone else who watched the movie because, well, the dinner made sense, but then they were like, hey, you, you, wanna, you, you need a place to stay? They just assumed he was homeless for some reason. <laughs> well, did you see that costume? <laughs> yeah, it looked like a Santa Claus from the mall. <laughs> he looked fine. <laughs> I also I also like how Lenny is just rolling with all this. He's like, "Fuck it, I'll spend the night at this orphanage. I don't care." Yeah, yeah. he was probably sleeping in Santa's village. This the is, a step uh, is up. it the? I believe it's the next morning when they're eating breakfast. He conceals a cereal <laughs> box that from Hulk's company yeah. with Hulk yeah. on the front of it. Right? He like crumples it up and hides it so that nobody knows his identity. Right, because again, he's a recognizable figure, and and if the kids figure out that he's not Santa Claus. Because look at him, he looks exactly like Santa Claus. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. It might, it might uh, ruin his plan a little bit. Yeah, Hulkster That's Claus true. has an entire line of health food, we've learned, at the beginning of the movie. I don't, I don't know if you mentioned this. Rules and health food? Rules and health food. He's got this whole, he's like, yeah, he's like a dickhole health nut or something like that. <laughs> um, I also have a note about this scene. Uh, the newspaper had the titular God line. God damn it, Paul. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Did you, you can't say everything, Mike. I know. I was hoping, I was waiting, but I was hoping no one would say it, so I could say it. You want to say it? Yeah, I'm going to say it. All right, go ahead. Hey, you guys know, know you want to know what else we didn't know? What? What, that the newspaper had the titular God line? Damn it! <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. Which I don't think has ever happened in a movie before. I don't know. <laughs> You know, another th- the thing I wanted to say was that Mila Kunis is responsible for the Santa with muscles outfit. Oh, That's yeah. true. That's true. She is the one who cuts the sleeves off and sews it up for him. But she didn't want to uh, alter uh, Lenny's Easter Bunny costume that he had to sleep in. For whatever <laughs> no. <reason>. Yes. <laughs> and no. but did we mention, I- I'm sure people have connected the dots at this point, but did we mention that Don Stark and Mila Kunis, both in this film of course, would also go on to star together in that 70s show. Yeah, and Mm -hmm. do you think that they ever looked at each other on the set of that 70s show and just went, so, Santa with muscles, huh? No, no, (laughs) I I bet they kept it quiet. They didn't talk about it to anyone. It's like, we will not talk about this. We will not speak of it. I did see an interview. uh, I saw, like, a piece of an interview with Mila Kunis because they asked her about it a few years ago, and she said she (laughs) she was too young to really understand the gravity or whatever you want to call it of working with hulk hogan she just thought he was like a big muscular dude she didn't like realize he was like she didn't know who he was really yeah she didn't really know who he was that's interesting i still don't really know who hulk hogan is so you know well you've seen the most of them chris because you've seen his (laughs) sex tape several hundred times oh shit that's right i forgot about the earlier part of the show yeah yeah you know hulk hogan (laughs) you know hulk hogan better than the rest of us do you guys think, um, speaking of Mila Kunis and the way she uh, gave it more of a continental look to Santa's uh, outfit, 
When, More of an intercontinental look, I would say. Well, I mean, you know, I'm not going to go against the the fashion designer. She she referred to it as continental. Well, Paul, so. we all know that Hulk Hogan Hulk Hogan was not the intercontinental champion. That's true. Yeah, I don't know why I said that because because yeah. he never was. Sorry, Mike. Terrible joke, Paul. She Terrible. Told, she said she learned how to do that from the Mega Man comic book issue 93. <laughs> now here's the thing. That's true. Please the tell Mega me you Man found that comics, comic. Oh, I. <laughs> Mega Man comics didn't start until 2010, and there's only 55 issues. So here's the question. <laughs> when they eventually get to issue 93, do you think they'll tie it in? Oh, man. We got to get on Twitter, and whoever's writing that thing, we got to let them know. We got to make this happen. Do it. Wait, wait. So are you good. telling me, Mike, are you telling me that Mila Kunis is a time traveler? <laughs> I'm not saying she's not. Well, okay. Wow. There is more evidence in this movie that she might be, but I want to wait till we get there. So let's just leave it at the, there's a theory among us. What? That Mila Did Kunis I totally is a time miss traveler. something? Yeah, I am in the dark. I'll get you. I'll 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 bring it up when it when it comes up. All right. Uh, Lenny has the idea that he want he sees Hulk in slow motion drinking milk, and gets the idea to get his thumbprint for the ATM. Oh, the talking ATM. Yes. Yeah, we forgot to mention that his his previous attempt to extract cash from his ATM card was was not successful because it required Santa Hulk's thumbprint. This is an ATM in 1996, ladies and gentlemen, and it, for some reason, requires a thumbprint scan. Yes, and this plan goes awry, which I, I think is kind of funny. When Lenny goes to the ATM, he the machine tells him he got the wrong thumb. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Not a thing. That's never been a thing. I'm sorry. That is your right thumb. Please place your left thumb on the scanner. <laughs> Cut over to the orphanage. Hulk doesn't really want to leave the place. He likes it. And he talks to the little girl who wrote the letter in the beginning in the church. Both of them and don't remember their song. parents, and they sing Angel Baby together. Has, has anyone ever actually beautiful. heard this song before? Is that a real um, song? Guys, I spent fucking half an hour rewinding that thing, trying to find that fucking song on the internet. What do you mean? You were using your, your phone to like try to pick up what the song was no, or something? No, no, I was just Googling every set of lyrics I could find in every iteration <laughs> and listening to fucking YouTube video clips about it and doing everything I could. It was fucking blowing my mind my roommate literally came out and goes what do you what do you are you rewinding what are you doing it's like i gotta figure this out so then it was so, so there was at least a little bit of original music in this movie right i, I guess so but would you call it music no no, no. i would call it torture <laughs> <laughs> and we're gonna play it for you right now Ugh. i'll always remember the time i with you. November, November, December, December, April, April May, and June. You are my angel baby. You're so fine, angel baby. My brother. It's ridiculous. This is this is where shit starts to really get fun. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> Wait, I went to the bathroom for this part. What happened? The, the windows are magic. When they she sang like this, the proper note, and all the windows glimmered and glistened because of fairies, supposedly. Yeah, but that proper note was really out of tune and very cacophonous. Well, she was eight. What? What? <laughs> what? Four dollar word? Did you just say? <laughs> Yeah, but it's amazing. Uh, like they use a really bad special effect on it, and it's fucking just what? What is the writer doing for this? <laughs> what? Well, it gets so much better too. It just keeps going. Oh, I know. Like it gets at some point, it stops. Events stop happening for a reason, and they just start happening because why the fuck not? Like the whole thumb thing. <laughs> There's no reason for him to go to that ATM and then have a thumb. And it's it's just there for fucking yep. why not? And here we uh, a little bit later, everybody's hanging out, and w the goons. Um, throw the head of the statue that they pulled over earlier, <coughs> they throw it through a window, and Santa Hulk goes out to confront them. And he has another great line where he looks at the orphanage people and goes, keep the milk and cookies warm. <laughs> I always love that. It's, it's such a weird yeah. one-liner. Which is interesting, because that happens just after Clayton, uh, you know, the old man. Garrett Morris. Yep, him. Uh, t leans over to Hogan and says, I'm proud of you, son. You finally made something of yourself. Which, 
to the audience at that point, we're like, oh, fuck, he knows that Hogan's Blake. He knows he's the rich guy. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> right, that's oh, what we're meant to believe. There's more to that knowing statement. <laughs> yeah. So many levels. <laughs> oh my but God. that moment surprised me. I, I'll give credit where yeah. credit is due. I'm like, wait, what? That, okay. I think that's the last what? sense of sanity in this film. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a dying gas. It's out the window. <laughs> so, uh, Paul... you. Mila realizes that one of the kids named Taylor is gone because he sees a, she sees a Walkman laying in the yard. Um, you wanna you wanna talk about what happens next? Oh, God. Uh, Were you back from the bathroom by this point? Uh, probably. I'm not sure what happens right here, so I'll just say maybe Brutus Asian Brutus Beefcake shows up. I don't know. No 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 no. Jesus. I think it's How later. long I did you go? Forty five minutes later. Oh okay. Shit. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> That's okay. So they go to Frost's house and they find this kid about to shoot a rock through his house with a slingshot. And that's oh, when yeah. Hulk lays down a lesson. He, he lays out another rule. <laughs> I was only trying to be like you, protecting all of us. I did what I had to in self-defense, Taylor. I'm only tough when I have to be. Is that a Santa rule? It's my rule. That reminds me, guys. Is there uh, is there a rule for piping smoke into your mansion? <laughs> <laughs> yes, he does. Frost house, like all around it, there's just smoke being piped up into the yard. It's just everywhere. And oh, Chris, think, why would you pipe around smoke? <laughs> why would you yeah. pipe around smoke? It just looks cool. I think anytime you try to do that, it should be left in the film. It did look pretty like, cool. What if what if like Hulk was in a shot with somebody and there was like a smoke machine right down by his feet and it made it look like his feet were on fire? Would you? That would, would be you cool. Still, okay. All You'd right. be like, well, wait, wait, what's happening here? Is his feet on fire? I don't know. It'd be a lot of drama and suspense. Well, well that yeah, actually really ex that explains Ed Begley's mansion because those smoke it, emitters it are look, everywhere. It did look cool, and you guys know what else looks really fucking cool? What? If you have a bunch of scientists at your house, and you make them all carry around T-squares for some reason. <laughs> they were all armed with T-squares. You know, you know the, th the tool you use for science. This is where I kind of started to uh, stop second-guessing the movie and just let it carry yeah. me. You have to let it give you the ride of your... Let, I, let Santa Mania run wild on you. <laughs> Wait, were you guys actually a little confused about the smoke machines outside? Well, it's because oh, yeah, of the totally. decontamination, is that right? Yeah, it was like a, a giant disinfectant spray, basically. <laughs> yeah. We didn't really brush yeah, that Yeah, the whole yet. thing was a little unclear. But Ed yeah. Ed Edley Bagelface is, uh, uh, <laughs> he's, a, he's a germaphobe. Yeah, his it's, character it, it, is a big-time germaphobe. Yeah. Where's, where's like, a, well, we won't get into that, but he, <laughs> I was about to jump ahead again. I want to talk about Asian Brutus Beefcake. Okay, okay we're I'm getting sorry. You gotta wait. We, are, we, we will wait. get there. Because shit's so, about to get even more bonkers yeah. than Asian Brutus God. Beefcake. It is. And the main takeaway from this scene is that Hulk, Santa Hulk, sees that Frost has a plan t to, like, take over the entire area of the orphanage. Because shortly after that, Mike, I know you're probably just itching to talk about this. T talk about the vault. Uh, I, well, oh, well you mean, Jay, you mean the clubhouse? Hold on, clubhouse. yeah, hold on. What, let's not jump. Let's not jump. So this is where my notes in all caps say this is where shit goes batshit crazy, because <laughs> they're sitting all the the orphanage, the three leftover kids, and, and that everyone else is sitting around the breakfast table again. So they're trying to figure out what's going on, and, and the map was apparently an underground map. The Hulk, Hulk of Claws noticed that, and so he's like, "What's under the orphanage?" And they're like, I don't know, rats, sewers, I don't know. And one of the kids goes, The clubhouse. Clubhouse? Oh, the old catacombs underneath the church. Yeah, the kids use it as a clubhouse. The clubhouse? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so they're like, right. Right. Yeah, and she, right. she's like, oh, well, there's catacombs under there. The kids no, yeah, use it as yeah. a clubhouse. Like, what? <laughs> yeah, no, so... so, <laughs> so <laughs> Oh so, man, they're like, oh, it's there's catacombs. Oh, and that big vault that we can't get into. But I don't know. <laughs> yeah, just just complete insanity. Just all right. We got a clubhouse under the building. All right, but is that in the basement? No, that's the catacombs. What are you yeah. talking about, catacombs? Oh, you know where the big vault door is. Now, 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 to anyone, uh, to anyone like that doesn't really believe us when we say catacombs, we're talking like Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade style catacombs, yeah. like yes. bodies buried there, full on Roman burial, whatever. It's, I like how the kids yeah. have like a couple chairs set up down there, you know, a table. They're just chilling, playing dice they have or whatever. A, they have a lantern, not a flashlight, like a lantern that you have to light. 
<laughs> hey, Maniacs, Paul Brooks here. If you're looking for the perfect gift for that special B-movie maniac in your life, or just something really cool for yourself, we have got you covered. Just in time for Christmas, we have brand new t-shirts for sale. They're printed on really great quality material. There's lots of colors to choose from, and we got styles for men and women. Head over to bmoviemania.com, click on the t-shirt ad in the top right corner, and check them out. Happy holidays and Merry Christmas from all of us here at B-Movie Mania. Uh, and okay, so they, there's this gigantic like vault door, like bank safe door, and there's initials <laughs> scratched in it. And BT w- BT is on there, and the kids say, "Well, we we've somehow figured out three out of the four numbers to the combination." I don't even know how do they even know that there's four that they no clue. So Blake knows it though, right? Like Santa Claus, he knew the last number. He knew the last number. He, he keeps sort of, uh, it's the classic amnesia thing where you sort of keep getting these little pieces of your memory back slowly at a time. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. The, thing, so, the thing is, he, him knowing that number makes no sense because, <laughs> because, because when they open the door, he's fucking surprised. He is he, totally if surprised. he knows the number for the vault, he should know what's in this fucking vault. Yes, yeah, so let's let's get into this. What's in this vault? <laughs> oh, I, I'll let someone else say it. Well, the the, the way uh, Lieutenant Savick uh, says tells Timmy to put down that crystal. I think it's filled with dildos. No, well, no. They, no, 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 no. Hey guys, I know what these are. These are pies that we left to crystals. I read about them in my geology book. They're quartz crystals with natural electricity in them. Vibrations make them put out power. They must be worth millions. Yeah, so it's not fairies. It's electric crystals. Don't they explode or something? Yes, they do explode. God. If yeah. And this is where I'm going to get back to the Mila Kunis is a time traveler theory. Because she consistently has the most scientific knowledge <laughs> out of the entire crew when it comes to dealing with these crystals. She knows that they're worth millions. She knows about how they build up energy. How would she know that unless she was a time traveler? Well, isn't she just supposed to be a smart kid? I mean, why why would Come she be on. a time traveler? Why would she, why would that be her purpose? If you guys, well, I think it's because she's traveled to the future and read Mega Man issue ninety four. <laughs> boom, uh, boom. God where she, damn it! Where she fucking learns about piezoelectric crystals and how they keep an electrical charge, and you know, it's a whole thing. Yeah, but, but do piezoelectric electric crystals really explode? No, but also here's something I when I was researching Pfizer electric uh, crystals, uh, turns out a similar uh, substance that is also uh, a natural conduct or natural battery effectively are bones. <laughs> <laughs> so my theory is maybe this is just part of the catacombs where they put where they just you know the bones were keeping the electricity. <laughs> that makes no sense. <laughs> well, did anything else in this movie well, make I, sense? I for one believe that Mila is a time traveler in this. Movie. I agree with you. Uh, Chris, I just want to uh, say that I'm uh, pretty impressed that somebody other than me realized that uh, Savick was in this movie. <laughs> yeah, I, I like uh, the whole movie, like seeing her name in the credits. Well, I can't remember her name offhand, but it sounded so familiar. Robin Curtis. Yeah, Robin Curtis. Like, I know that name from somewhere. Where do I know that? And I finally looked it up on IMDb tonight. Like, oh, yeah, Star Trek 2 and 3. Uh, Star Trek 3 and 4. 3 and 4. Oh, yeah, well, that's right, because Kirstie Alley... Played the was role Savick in Star Trek in two. two. Yes, yeah. yes. But good on you for even uh, doing That's the right, research yeah. on it. Yeah. Continue. <laughs> <laughs> um, outside the vault, Hulk asks a bunch more questions about how he's not Santa, and um, Lenny ca- kind of tells him some of the truth, but not all of the truth. Look, I don't have all the answers, but those kids, they need Santa Claus right now. Just be Santa. We'll figure out the rest later, all right? Then we get we get a pretty intense fight here. Oh my god. Um, okay, this is my favorite part. No, wait. Okay, well if it's your favorite wait, part, part where they where they where Hogan well, Santa with muscles chases him through the Yeah through yeah, the yeah, build yeah. through the building. They end up in like yep. a clock tower of some sort. Yeah, or a bell tower. I don't know what it is. And there's for some reason there are, there are <laughs> giant candy canes scattered around and a big animatronic Santa just Moving and waving. 
<laughs> moving and waving. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> and uh, wait, wait. Uh, before I know where you're going with this, I, and I'm going to let you get there, but I just want to say one thing right before the big event that you're about to talk about. I love it when Santa Hulk corners Dr. Blight and he goes, ho, ho, ho. As if he were saying, I've got you now. <laughs> Love that. And the only reason this doctor guy even survives this fight in this, you know, orphanage bell tower is because Santa with muscles is standing just a little too close to that animatronic Santa. <laughs> That'll as get it, you every time. As it turns, waving hello. It, it somehow grabs on to Santa's waist and pushes him out the window. Like, what does that thing weigh? Like 6.2 pounds? Come on. That Hulk is... Hogan, a 300-pound man, is just going to get sort of like gently jostled out of a building? Well, it's, it was obviously, a, a, you know, a cinematic allusion to Vertigo, the classic Alfred Hitchcock sure, film. Sure, Mike, where sure, Where the homage. animatronic Easter Bunny <laughs> almost knocks Jim Stewart out the thing. I think it's an homage to bullshit. <laughs> After that, Hulk, he's in the garbage truck, but he wakes up. Uh, at his home at Blake Thorne's house, and he has all of his memories. Uh, major issue with this. Major issue. <laughs> it's classic okay, movie trope. No, yeah, I understand that it's a classic trope, but how does falling into a bunch of fluffy garbage bags bang your head so hard that you get your memory back? Mm, it was, I'll tell I mean, you. He landed so nicely. Because he looks over, and he the first thing he sees in the garbage truck is his own product container, when he pass, and then he Paul, passes out. We all know that Two concussions make a right. <laughs> Got it. Yeah. Just as the all, NFL. It's, oh, boy. Let's not get dark. Um, <laughs> it's also a cinematic allusion uh, to the classic film Men at Work. No. Uh, no. Where, no? Okay. <laughs> Just no. But he's still a good person. Like, he doesn't revert to the bad, the bad persona. And he calls the orphanage, and the call is intercepted by the lackeys because they were, I guess, waiting for the call or something. And they impersonate Leslie, Savick, or whatever you want to call her. And Yes, I they, want to call her Savick. Savick. And they tell him to never come back. So he's really upset. Everybody's upset. The kids are upset. Even Lenny's upset because he's trying to help out. Now. I was he's upset. Guy. Chris was upset. Mike was upset. I was upset. It's the low, it's the low point. It's the low point of the film. Yeah, right. it is a low point. Yeah. Um, now, here's something I really liked about this movie, okay? This is when the bad guys storm the uh, the orphanage. orphanage, right? And the electric hands lady blows the doors off of the <laughs> front of the orphanage. And, dude, they explode. <laughs> like, Which they explode <laughs> off the front of the And engines. I don't think I need to explain why that's a bad idea when your orphanage is built on top of a bomb. Right, correct. But I just really enjoyed that visual of those doors <laughs> completely just being annihilated. <laughs> there was a lot of door punishment in this. Well, I there think was. a lot of that was uh, Asian Brutus Beefcake. Oh, hell yeah. He does it. Hogan does it later. <laughs> I think this part here, Jay, is really they're kicking it off with the light show, and then every door they come into after that uh, gets knocked off as hinges. I think maybe literally there's no more doors in the movie. No, there's no, there's definitely more doors in the movie because Chris, I think you know what I'm going to say here. <laughs> well, they, all, they knock them all off, but the doors all get hurt. Every door we see after that gets ripped apart. Doors get hurt, but at some point, I can't. Is it Lenny who gets kind of stuck behind a door, and they do the callback from Monster Mash where he yeah. keeps getting smashed with the door? Yeah. Three times it happens. It's the it's the geologist, uh, Doctor Flint, Doctor Flint Gazette, because he Doctor Flint takes opens up the door with his jackhammer, which is apparently his special power of the vault. Right. And he takes it off the hinges, and he's stuck behind it. Then everyone runs into him and fucks with him. At this point, everybody's at the orphanage, so it's it's, it's a showdown. All of, it's a showdown. It's all about to happen. And Paul, okay. I know you wanted to get to this. Um, <laughs> yes, this is where we see who Paul. That would be. A very offensively dressed Brutus Beefcake <laughs> wearing a, like, kung fu 
Fu Manchu mustache <laughs> and oh, making offensive yeah, you know, yeah. noises. There was no reason for him to be an Asian character. <laughs> At this point in time, Brutus Beefcake, Ed Leslie, and Hulk Hogan were really good friends, like best friends. And I really think, but I think this is where kind of cracks started to form in the friendship, and they hate each other now. And I think it really started because Brutus Beefcake was forced to dress as an Asian stereotype and not Santa with muscles. <laughs> the other crack, Chris, may have come from, I think is right around the same time, was uh, Hog Wild '96 in Sturgis, South Dakota? Oh yeah, Dakota, yeah. Oh well, definitely, when definitely. Brutus joined the NWO, but then Hulk and Kevin Nash and Scott Hall all turned on him, and Ooh, I think that yeah. that was probably a big, so big deal Brutus for him as well. So Brutus Beefcake kicks Lenny out the back door, and Santa <laughs> Hulk. Yeah, hey, when he pulls back staff, on back on topic, Jay. Santa Hulk and the entire <laughs> his entire staff, they're all going to go on uh, the mission to save the kids in the orphanage. Yeah. Somebody. I, I just. Sorry. What? Well, I just, I just think that it was smart to kick him out because it wouldn't. It really, he wasn't on the same level as Nash and Hall and Hogan. So then you want to get the big cut stars to in the NWO. Clint Howard. Chris, say Clint Howard. Clint Howard is practicing pulling people over <laughs> when he sees Hulk's Hummer row by, and the cops. Another, another chase happens. Hmm. More unexpected guests. We'll just have to handle it Blake's way. Pierre, the first course, please. Let him try some of Blake's way salad oil. <laughs> no cholesterol, only three calories per serving. And it goes down smooth. <laughs> this is where they decide to dr dump Hulk's signature <laughs> salad dressing on the road, and the cars like spin out as the salad dressing hits the pavement. All right, we're, we're going to need to spend about five minutes on this. Okay, oh, yeah, also the protein powder, right? Salad dressing and protein powder. Two bottles. And the salad dressing is just all over the road. <laughs> it's I mean, two small bottles. <laughs> but it's size. like someone dumped a swimming pool of salad dressing all over the road. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's it's great. And the whole gang here, they turn the corner and there's more cops, right? And one of the cops pulls out a bazooka. Right? <laughs> no, yeah, he no, does. he and does. No, he doesn't. He pulls out a bazooka. God damn it. They're they, sitting there. The, the Hulk is sitting there in his car, and they're surrounded. And that's when we learn Rule 20. Blake's Rule 20, sir, is never surrender. Never surrender. And Hulk gasses it. Yeah. So the guy actually, the cop actually shoots the bazooka and Not hits a bazooka. Not Clint a bazooka. Howard's car. <laughs> Clint Howard I believe, barely gets away. Yes, he does. And I believe his line is... Which one of you turkeys is responsible for this? Yeah. He said the word turkey a bunch. Speaking of uh, Blake's rules, is there a rule 34 for this movie? <laughs> Dear God. <laughs> is there some Clint uh, Howard rule 34 out there somewhere? Oh, there I'm going to look be. that up right now. Let's see. Oh, oh, no, no, do not no, do that. Okay. We will well, not provide a link to that down well, below. We all, we all know that there's some uh, Blake Thorne rule 34. Okay, so they oh, get yeah. to the or know. they get to the orphanage. Yes, thank you, Mike. <laughs> and uh, the orphanage, go. Yep, yeah, you're in the orphanage, and then Hulkster and his like entourage of servants, you know, break down the door. They like punch one guy in the face or whatever. This is the last point we ever see his crew. They're gone from the oh, movie. Oh yeah, you're right. Yeah. They're not in the rest of this fight scene, which is a bunch of fighting. So no, yeah, they're but, they're fighting. He and they all end up in the church, right? Yeah. And then we have Beefcake versus Hogan, which was the biggest uh, letdown of the movie for me. So <laughs> disappointing. So disappointing. I agree. I'd be pissed if I was Beefcake too. I'd be like, "Fuck you, Hogan." Yeah, Actually, I mean, I, seriously. I think I think the whole fight is a lot like this comment, and that it, it will be edited out for time. <laughs> <laughs> um, now it won't, see. though. That's now the it problem. won't be. Now you've assured that it's in. <laughs> Damn it. Um, okay, so Lenny Lenny pours water on the Electro Girl, and she fries. Dies. Um, yeah, no, yeah, she, she fucking straight dies. There's electrical, yeah. like, arcs coming out of her eyes. It, it's straight out of a fucking horror film. <laughs> it is insane. But speaking of uh, door violence, there's a little bit more here. 
Hulk kicks down one of the doors and Savick <laughs> and Clayton are sitting there and Clayton has another great line. Well, all you had to do was knock. Yeah. <laughs> like, you don't need to kick down the door. And this is a big reveal right here because they're going to go charge out oh, and kick yeah. the bad guy's ass again. And, and Clayton slows it down for a minute. Who wants it? He tells the Hulkster... That the Hulkster, he's like, don't you remember? You used to live here in this orphanage. And he, like, points out a photo. He's like, that's you up there. And Frost. You grew up here. Look. Is that me? There's more. You see the boy sitting right next to you? He was your best friend, Ebna Frost. How do you, yeah, well, yeah, but how do you, A, do you not fucking know you went to that, you lived in a goddamn orphanage? Right. Even when he like, got his memories back, he didn't Yeah, know. his memory's back. He's, He's like, wait a minute, I've been staying at the orphanage I grew up in. Yeah. Let, let's just say that, the, that these concussions weren't Hulk's first. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And uh, you know, a concussions, it's not an exact science. It's habitual not Habitual amnesia. <laughs> yeah, it's just, this is another point where the writer just went, fuck it, we just, we just yeah, let's just do this, because then I'm going to reveal that also the second kid in that picture is the main bad guy, too. Why not? <laughs> they were friends. But they were best friends. Best friends. Yeah, well, that's what we should have known at the beginning of the movie. Yeah, so I don't know. I did not see that coming. <laughs> Leslie and the kids knock Dr. Blight into the freezer, and that's pretty much the end of him. Now, we all go down into the catacombs. The crystal, they're all in the crystal chamber, and they fight. They basically just have a fight with what? What are the just uh, big no? Metal? It's not just a fight. <laughs> yeah, no. Don't even <laughs> pretend it's just a fight. It is a goddamn lightsaber fight <laughs> with explosive <laughs> crystals. <laughs> Some whoever wrote this said, "God, I wish I could somehow get a lightsaber fight in here," and they just made <laughs> they it work. Just did it. The, it <laughs> Paul, I literally wrote this down. They break off long crystals and have a lightsaber fight. This is the magic of cinema at work. You can do anything. Yeah, yeah. My notes say, holy shit, a lightsaber fight. <laughs> so good. I mean, if this were at all realistic, they would have blown off all their hands the first time those crystals, they, they, crossed, yeah. they crossed swords. But, nope. That's true. That's where the movie really lost me. <laughs> that right there? Just that right there. <laughs> So, and let me just say again, Mila points out, because Mila and the kids are down there, she points out that the whole place is going to explode from an energy buildup. So she's, again, pointing out scientific information, and that's that gets everybody, everybody to run and leave the orphanage. You know, at this point, really, the, the whole catacombs are underneath, like, the entire neighborhood. Shouldn't they leave the neighborhood? <laughs> Probably. Oh, I assume a lot of people died. Yeah, they had to have. Uh, but the, this was a massacre. But no one died. The only, well, the only people that may have died are Hulk's staff, because since we don't ever see them. Yeah, they again. just disappeared. <laughs> so outside, the orphanage collapses in giant, brilliant flashes of light. Uh, Chris, can you say Clint Howard? Clint Howard? Clint Howard rolls up in a shell of his car. It looks awesome. Uh, then a bunch of other cops. <laughs> it looks amazing. awesome. This is the only point in the movie where I genuinely laughed is Clint Howard, for whatever reason, has his windshield wipers on, and they're just going back and forth, wiping nothing at all. <laughs> that's awesome. pretty good. I, I wouldn't say that's the only time I laughed. But that's yes, the only that time good. I genuinely laughed. You didn't oh, laugh at when he was, uh, he was uh, like practicing doing his pullover speech? I think I was in the bathroom. <laughs> you need to learn how to use the pause button. Okay. Um, so, okay, the whole gang is taken away. We're almost to the end here. The, the, the people have nowhere to go, right? And Hulk's like, I got an idea. I thought he was going to invite them all, like, to his mansion. Right, me too. Um, yeah, so they end up taking over Frost's house, and there now there's tons of kids, so I guess they... Wait, did we know, just ignore how the how the orphanage imploded? No, we talked about it. Where we were just you? Talked about did you go that? to the bathroom? Oh were you in the bathroom? I was in the... I, was in the, I need to learn to pause Paul, button. cut that part out. <laughs> <laughs> yes, there are tons of kids... Um, they look through a little telescope and they can see the gang, the, the bad guys, cleaning up the wreckage of the old Community place. service. As prisoners. They're wearing, like, prison jumpsuits. Yes, like old-timey prison, prison jumpsuits. And the little girl says she believes in Hulka Claus, and I think he ends the movie by saying ho, ho, ho. Wow! A Christmas miracle! I do believe in you. Blake... 
can, can I can I say though that there is one? I have one big question about the end of this movie. Okay. So right. so Garrett Moore, everyone moves into you know the mansion with you know Santa with muscles, and Garrett Morris is left though. I mean, he looks like he moves in, but he's mowing the lawn. So does that yeah. mean at some point later this week when the rest of Santa with muscles crew attacks him for training? Does Garrett Morris attack Hulk Hogan? And what does he attack him with? He could. He might. <laughs> the mower. <laughs> the mower. <laughs> he tries to run him over. Oh, oh God. <laughs> he drives um, it up into his into his bedroom. Makes yeah. total how, sense. How much later is this shindig, by the way? Because they apparently have <laughs> have found, like, 50 more orphaned children to, to house. Not just that, but the uh, Frost's gang was tried and convicted. Apparently, uh, justice yeah. in the Santa with muscles verse is swift. <laughs> I have I have one theory that I would like to bring up real quick, if you don't mind. Yes, please. Mike, you made a, a brilliant point earlier when you said that there's evidence that Mila Kunis is a time traveler because of that Mega Man number, what was it? Like 92 or whatever? 93. 93, okay. What's interesting is that at the time the script was written, they didn't know that Mega Man was eventually going to turn into a comic. That's true. So does that mean that the writers, the actual writers, oh, fuck. are from the future? Ooh. Maybe. Is it the writer that ended up suing the movie? Is he from the future and he just took all the money that he got into the future oh, somehow? What if that's why it's so crazy? What if he like put in all this cool future stuff that was reality to him and then they like the studio was like this is fucking crazy and they tried as much as they could to rein it in to something believable. <laughs> the future is going to be filled with uh, women with electric hands. Yep. <laughs> oh, I hope so. I can only You don't need hope batteries so. anymore. I think that brings us around to rating time. Rating time. Guys, I'm thinking we should rate this in Hulka Claws. Mm -hmm. Okay. Hulka is? Hulka Clauses is. <laughs> um, so, who should I start with? I'm going to start with Chris. How many Hulka Claws uh, do you give this movie? You know, I, I have to say that I don't think I enjoyed this movie as much as the rest of you. Um, because I was holding it to a higher standard than it really deserved. <laughs> so, uh, I, you know, I'm, <clears throat> I thought it was okay. There were a few parts that I really enjoyed. The cast was pretty great. I'm going to go with uh, 60 Hulka Claws. Okay. I have a feeling I know where Paul's going with this, so let's let's get the the Grinches out of the way early. Paul? <laughs> you don't know me. <laughs> True. <laughs> Watching the movie, I actually kind of, I, yes, I agree with Chris to an extent. It was so unfunny. There, there's so, so many things in this movie that are just trying to be really funny, and I'm just like, ugh, I'm dying right now. But by the end of the movie, it, it's, it's one of these things where it's so jam-packed, and it just gets so over the top and ridiculous that it kind of won me over more by the end of it. <laughs> So I'm going to be a little bit more generous, and I will say, um, I'll say 65 Hulk of Clauses is. Very nice. Mike, what do you got? You guys know I like uh, <laughs> to let loose and uh, just, just pull off the shackles of reality from time to time, at least from a writing standpoint. Mm -hmm. um, so, so I really do enjoy something where it, it's hard to find the logic of why it happened <laughs> and just just living with Are you talking the, about the, about the, the the plot or the actual why this movie was made? Uh no the, the reason the movie was made makes a lot of sense. Hulk was a is a, a hero. So obviously they mm. wanted to make, you know, why not put a Christmas movie with him in there? Uh, you know Sinbad's got one coming out. You got to do something. So <laughs> just the writing and the directing choices and everything was just to me just so so wonderful. Um, God. I'm doing. I'm gonna say eighty. Eighty. Wow. Okay. Okay. Very nice. Um, for me, I, I I think I'm I'm more with Mike on this. It's just so nuts. The whole thing, the whole idea of it, and how it comes together is so over the top and so nuts that I had a very good time with it pretty much the entire way through like it just almost every i think mike and i were chatting about this a little bit while i was watching it and he'd already seen it just about every moment of the movie you're like why is this happening what is going on 
and I really can get behind that from time to time. And it's the holiday season. Um, I'm gonna go 91. I, oh, I love. I, wow. I had a great time with this movie. Wow. It got progressively crazier. It's got Clint Howard. Come on, I had a great time with it. Merry Christmas. Gentlemen, um, I had a good time with this. I had a good time uh, recording this. I'm still feeling festive. I hope you guys are too. I'm a, I'm a little uh, tipsy off this eggnog. Yeah, this eggnog really hit me. Me as well. Mike, I would like to unwrap, I would like to, um, in whatever audio fashion we can, I'd like to unwrap your present to us now. What do you have for us? Oh, sir, I have... Just a nice Christmas carol for you. And if I may, here I go, oh, right now. Oh, come, all ye faithful, joyful and triumphant. Oh, come ye, oh, come ye to be. Let us adore Jay. Oh, come, let us adore Mike. Oh, come, let us adore Paul. Chris loves the blob. <laughs> <laughs> that was great. Thank you, Mike. That that's the perfect song to go with this fire that we have here. This oh, eggnog. Come. Oh, there's more. Ye maniacs praising the low budget. So come ye, oh, come ye to be movie mania. Come and behold <laughs> Paul. He eats vegan pizza. Oh, come, let us adore Jay. Oh, come, let us adore Chris. Oh, come, let us adore Paul. Mike is your favorite. Oh, no. come, well, I don't know about that. all ye maniacs. Oh, I was really hoping you would sing Angel Baby. I got way off key there at the end there, Hudson. <laughs> well, folks, that wraps up our holiday special. We hope you had a good time. We hope you enjoyed the movie if you watched it along with us. Don't forget, you can find us on social media. Facebook, look, find us on Twitter, find us on Instagram. We do all that stuff. Um, we're going to keep drinking eggnog and roasting ourselves by the fire here. So we hope you have a great holiday season. We will be back for season two very shortly. And until then, happy holidays. Happy holidays. Happy holidays. Listen up, maniacs. Do you have a question or a comment? Would you like to uh, send some bourbon to Uncle Lloydy? You can contact the gang on Facebook at B Movie Mania. You can also drop them a line at bmoviemania.com. Reach out, touch them. They are touching themselves, and they might just reach back. I'm Lloyd Kaufman saying, see you next time on B Movie Mania. Woohoo!